Uh, you see the title today, Nations. Nations. Uh, this word uh, to the right is the word ethnos. That's what's called uh, the transliteration of the Greek. That's not the Greek, but it's taking the Greek words and uh, transferring them to English letters. And ethnos is where we get the word uh, ethnic from, or ethnicity. And so as we're, what we're going to take a look at today, and, and this is really important, a lot of times we talk about different races, right? I'm this, you're that. Well, actually, in the biblically, there, biblically, there were just two different kinds of people, and that was the Jewish people and everybody else. And they're called Gentiles. So if you weren't Jewish, then you were a Gentile. So today what we're celebrating is uh, the Feast of Pentecost, a Jewish celebration, Pentecost meaning 50. It's also called the Feast of Weeks. It's 50 days after Passover. So we're looking at 50 days after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have another festival or feast going on. Uh, Jesus arose from the dead 40 days after his uh, resurrection. He went into heaven. He told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem till you receive what the Father has promised, which would be the Holy Spirit. That is 10 days later on the day of Pentecost. There's a lot of meaning and a lot of connection uh, to Pentecost that we're going to learn today that, you know, we know God had a plan, right? And he has a plan. But what a plan. What a plan. Uh, it, it goes far beyond what our, 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 our minds and hearts can even uh, take in. And so what I'd like to do is we look at this celebration. Uh, we have the apostles. You have 120 uh, believers that are celebrating uh, Pentecost together. And let's just pick up and, and get a feel for this and see this connection to something that happened in the Ancient of Days. We start in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they, that's the uh, apostles, the 120 believers, they were all together in one place. Oh, did I do that? Or? I'll go. I'm going forward. Pentecost, there we go. All right, let's try one. Here we go. Pentecost, okay. Boom. Okay, thank you. And, well, and there we go. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Now what's important is that, um, let's take a look at verse 3. So we're going to pick out a word. And divided tongues, would you say divided with me? Divided. divided because this is really important. We're going to pick up on this. Something that happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. So suddenly it came from heaven, a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire, that's a simile, it, it wasn't tongues of, of fire, like fire, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, actually languages, actual languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation. Would you say nation with me? Nation, because that's the word ethnos. Nation. Every nation. Look at that a little bit. Every nation. And then verse 6. When the sound occurred, a crowd gathered and was in what? confusion. So we're getting this word nation, we're getting the word divided or dispersed, and we're getting the word confusion. Are you confused? Hopefully not. We'll, we'll, we'll put this together in a little bit. When the sound occurred, a, a crowd gathered, and it was in, they were in confusion because each one heard them speaking in his own language. It was literal, legitimate languages of Jewish people who lived in other nations or countries who spoke a, a particular type of language. And we look, read in verse 7, and they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, meaning his own uh, language from his country that he's living in? 
Again, three words that are very important as we look to an event that happened a long time ago. Three words. Oh, let's do verse 9. Let's see. All right. Let's go to, there's the three words. Okay. Three words that pop up, very important, uh, on the day of Pentecost, that is divided, confused, and nations. These three words, to separate, divide, nations, ethnos, as we go back and we look at the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel. You know, a lot of times we talk about, and we believe it, from uh, Answers in Genesis, we really believe how important it is for us to look at the whole Bible uh, by starting out in the very beginning to believe and trust what the Scripture says about God creating in six days, amen? But also what is extremely important, too, for us is to understand what God did from the very beginning, the plan he had. And as we look at the day, the day of Pentecost, as we look at the day of Pentecost, uh, well, let's just have a picture. Here we go, picture of Babel. You know, in, in Genesis 1.28, God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Because in Eden, Eden wasn't the whole earth. Eden was a small, was a section on earth, and they were to go out from Eden. They were to go out and to fill the earth and to multiply. Geographically, it was the place on the earth. And they were to go out. Their job was to go out and to image God, so to speak, to represent him in the world. Of course, the serpent got involved and ruined that. Adam and Eve's sin actually stopped that, didn't it? But also after the flood, after the flood had happened because of the uh, unbelievable wickedness, and we can't even conceive this type of wickedness that happened before the flood, beyond, beyond measure. But after the flood, God told Noah and his sons in Genesis 9-1 to be fruitful and to multiply, and guess what? To fill the earth, to, to go out across the planet. Their job like Adam and Eve as God's imagers, was to represent God and to go out into the world. It was a great commission for them, as it was a great commission originally for Adam and Eve. But then there was the Tower of Babel, right? There was the Tower of Babel. Let's see what happened at the Tower of Babel hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus ever walked the earth. This is right after the flood. We read in Genesis 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as the people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had made uh, brick for stone, bitumen for mortar, and God had just given them this great commission to go out into the world, right, for him as their, his, God's imagers. And everyone here today is a descendant of Noah and a descendant of either Shem, Ham, or Japheth, one of his children. We're all, we are all descended. So God gives, again, gives this, this a great commission to go out to fill the earth and what do they do? Let's take a look at verse 4. And they, then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. That's a whole other issue. We can't go there today. A whole other issue. And let us make a name for God as his imagers. No, let us make a name for ourselves lest we be dispersed and this word dispersed is the word for scattering seed. Lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth, which is what God had told them to do, right? God directly told them as a great commission to go out into all the world and to multiply and fill it. And then we read, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people. They have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. 
Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of the uh, entire earth, and they left off the building of the city because God's, God's will to fill the earth was going to happen anyway. And then what we pick up on, therefore, its name was called Babel because there the Lord, what? Confused the language of all the earth and from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. He scattered them. God divided, he confused. And what we now see from Genesis 11, different nations. Scripturally, in Genesis 10, 11, we see 70 nations because of the different languages going out into the world separated by their language, 70 nations that were all disinherited from God. They were all scattered. And they were all Gentile, they were all Gentile nations because Israel did not exist at this time. And actually, Abraham didn't exist at this time. You have 70 nations separated, going in their direction to fill the earth, separated linguistically by their language. Does that make sense? Because they, at one time they had one language, and they all understood each other. Another way that we read about this, in Deuteronomy, put it this way, and this was re- written hundreds of years after the fact. In Deuteronomy, we read, When the Most High gave the nations ethnos, those 70 nations, their inheritance, when he divided mankind, as he scattered them out, He fixed the borders of the peoples, the 70 nations that turned out to be 70 nations, according to the number of the sons of God. And this is where sometimes we have a little bit of trouble, and and depending on a Bible translation you may have, uh, it it could say um, according to the sons of Israel or the children of Israel. The earliest manuscript, the Septuagint, which is about 800 to 1,000 years earlier than the text a lot of times we use, uses the term son of God, sons of God. And the Septuagint translates it to angels. See, because Israel did not exist at this time. Israel did not exist. Septuagint manuscript uses the term sons of God or angels of God. And later, out of these nations... God chose Abraham. He called Abraham out, who was the father of Isaac, who was the grandfather of Jacob, who was Israel. And so when we read this, that God dispersed, and we have 70 Gentile nations, we read, when the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed borders of the people geographically according to the number of the sons of God, the angels, But the Lord's portion, his people, Jacob, his allotted heritage, because he called Abraham out of all those Gentile nations. And from Abraham and the promise and Abraham's belief to Isaac, to Jacob, which is Israel, we have the Jewish faith. We have the Jewish people. Does that make sense? Good so far? Okay. So God chose Jacob, Jacob's grandfather, Abraham, And we actually see in the very next chapter after this, the Tower of Babel and the dispersion, we actually see in the very next chapter after this this, uh, disheritance of the nations, the ethnos, we pick up the story of Abraham. Now the Lord said to Abram, who would become Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, the nation of Israel. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. That's great. But what about the other nations? The other nations that are out there and they're not, they're just kind of lost out there. And God says, I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. But here it is. And in you all, you say all together, 
all, all the families of the, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you. Because the Messiah will one day come, a descendant of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham, would come, he would die on a cross, he would be buried, he would rise from the dead, he would go into heaven, and he would tell his disciples, wait for the promised Holy Spirit, wait for the gift, for this baptism of the Holy Spirit, which will come, but stay in Jerusalem. And this is what we have in Pentecost. The curse is reversed from Babel. So let's go back to this great reversal again in Acts. We have this great commission to Adam and Eve, but they forfeited it. This great commission to Noah and his sons, but they forfeited it. And we will see another great commission. So let's go back to Pentecost. Fifty days after Jesus' death and resurrection, he's, he's gone into heaven. And we already read that the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. They're, they're, they're filled with the Spirit, speaking in different legitimate languages. And then we pick up in Acts 2.22. Peter is giving, you could say, the first gospel message. He is giving the first message. This is the day that the church is born on the day of Pentecost. And he says, Men of Israel, hear these words, because this is a Jewish festival, Jew Jewish feast. There are just Jewish people there. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you well know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. This, this term lawless men or wicked men is a term that is used for Gentiles or for the Romans. Verse 24 God raised him up, losing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. A little later in Peter's gospel message, as he's speaking, he says, let all the house of Israel, that Israel, God's portion, therefore know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ, Lord and uh, Messiah, Lord and the Anointed One, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? How do we respond to this? And Peter said to them, Repent, which means to change your mind. Change your mind about something. You change your mind. And because of that, you change direction and even action. And be immersed. Word rep, uh, repent, uh, baptism is the word baptismo. It means to go under, to be submerged. So he says, repent, change your mind, change your direction, be baptized, immersed. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then we continue. You want to see the great reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel? Here it is. And read this one more time. And Peter said to them, Repent and be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for you, the Jewish people there, for your children, which makes it generation after generation after generation, and for all who are far, who are, who are the far off? I mean, in the 60s, I was a teenager, I would say, oh, man, far out. But who are the, you're right, you know, who are the far out? Who are those? For the far off as well, whom the Lord God our will call. So let's read that again. For the promise is for you, Jewish people, Jewish, the Jewish people, for your children, generation after generation, linear, and for all who are far off. Because as we know now, as, as Christians, we, we are one in Christ. Amen? The verse we're going to take a look at in Ephesians, Paul's writing to basically a Gentile church. And he's writing to this church, and this is you know, after the church has been established. This is after Pentecost, of course. But Paul is writing to these, these Gentile believers at, at Ephesus. 
And he says, remember you Gentiles, which is the word ethnos, which is the word, uh, you know, meaning ethnic. They're, they're, they're a nation. They are not the same as the Jewish people. He says, remember that you were at the time separated from Christ. You were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, which is the nation that God pulled out of the 70 nations by, by tapping on Abraham's you know, shoulder and having that relationship. He says, you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, in Jesus Christ, you who were, were far off, you who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So who are those people who are far off? Gentiles. Ethnos, the nations. The very term that is being used now in the day of Pentecost which is a reversal of the separation, dividing, dispersing, and disheriting now to inclusion, bringing together. Let's go back to uh, Acts 2.30 and 39. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized or be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, Jewish people, for your children, linear, and for all who are far off, the nations. Gentiles. That's us. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. This reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel, God had planned for thousands of years. So we read, after Peter gave this great, great uh, gospel presentation, we see that there will be the inclusion of all people to be able to be children of God, to come to him. We read, and with many other words, Peter bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received the message, the gospel message, were baptized or immersed, and they were added that day about 3,000 lives, souls. The word added means to be placed into something. 3,000 souls were placed that day. The church was born. You know, Peter had said that God had a definite plan, and he still does, but it's not fulfilled yet. And for those of us who are in Christ, it doesn't matter if we're Jew or Gentile, ethnos, we are all not only in the image of God, we are imagers for God in this world. We are actually imagers of Jesus Christ in this world. And like the imagers Adam and Eve, like the imagers uh, Noah and his children, we also have a great commission. We have a great commission to go out, and to multiply and to fill the earth with and for God's kingdom. The parting words of Jesus to his disciples after he went into heaven, after his death and resurrection, it's called the, the Great Commission. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, Make disciples of all, what? Nations, ethnos. Immersing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am presently with you always, continually. To the end of the age. I guess the only question is, how will you and how will I respond to that great commission? Amen?